Yeah. Having fun? Yeah. Good. Whoa. Oh, turkey yeah. vulture. I mean, it's actually vulture. not a turkey vulture. It's just a black vulture. Just flew out of the barn roof. Up in to the tree. This is our resident vulture. It's our friend. It helps keep the homestead nice and clean. I got this whole pile almost completely separated out with different sections of the different types of plants on both sides. And as I got deeper into the pile, most of it seemed like it was rotting already. So I uh, figure, well, you know, maybe I'll spread this out and see what grows. They are perennials after all. Can't hurt to try. Fish in the sea. Hello. I think I have something. Hello. Go kitty. Autumn is pooping pellets. Finally. This was a very long stage of diarrhea. Um, still not 100% sure if it was caused by something she ate or a mild toxidia strain but she is feeling better. She's eating and drinking normally. She's pooping normally. And now we just gotta get some weight back on her. She did lose a little bit of weight. Not bad, not bad. But I guess when you're going to the bathroom that much, you tend to lose weight. Hello, Kitty. Kitty wants to be the star of the show today. She saw me pull this camera out and she said, film me, I'm gorgeous. Just, just look at me, I'm just gorgeous. Yes, Kitty, you are gorgeous. We do have the telltale signs of barber pole in some of the other goats. We've had a couple that have come down with anemia and diarrhea at the same time, um, just out of the blue. That's a, almost a surefire sign that it's barber pole. Barber pole acts very quickly on the blood levels in a goat. They can consume a huge amount of blood in a very short period of time and barber pole lay thousands of eggs a day. So when you run into a situation like barber pole, sometimes you gotta pull out the chemicals. We did get most of the ones that had the situation treated pretty quickly. Um, with herbs only. Hello, who's on my back? Hello, oh, hello, it's you. Silly munchie. Um, we did get most everybody treated pretty quickly. We have a couple that are still being treated for the anemia. And then a couple of um, bucks now have poopy butt. So we are treating them with the herbs. I only had one doe that I had to treat with the chemicals because she wasn't responding well to the herbs. She kept on acting lethargic, whereas nobody else was acting lethargic. They were just, eh, 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 eh. Be nice. <sighs> Time is always trying to be mean to Autumn, which is so awful. Yes, Brunchy, I got you, I love you. Sweet boy. He just has to rub on me and rub on me. <laughs> He's putting his feet on my butt. Stop it. <laughs> um, <he's, laughs> I can't film because I have a baby goat putting his feet on my butt. Anyway, everybody's doing really well. Um, the goats are fighting off parasites due to the wet weather, but they are doing a good job with it. So most of them didn't need any chemical use. And the one that did get the chemical treatment is now perked up. So we're just gonna keep moving forward and keep up with the herbs during this time of high moisture. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> he loves his mama. He loves me. This little bantam rooster is now free-ranging because 
He tried to attack me and Ryan one too many times when we were changing out waters and gathering eggs. And we got nervous that we weren't going to be able to let the boys collect eggs in that chicken tractor. So we let him out. He's come at me a couple of times. It's funny, you wouldn't think such a small little rooster would be scary coming at you, but he makes it seem so real. And he does have sharp spurs. Not sure, we're gonna try to see if we can find a family for him, or, you know, just let him free range and see how it goes. I don't know if y'all can see our friend here. You can at least see a silhouette of him, I think. But we have a gray tree frog that is living on our solar charger. So every time I go to turn it on or off, I say hello, my little friend. <laughs> he doesn't even jump away when we do it. Unfortunately, with all the rain we've had, my garden is a hot mess. The weeds are growing like crazy because of the rain and I just have not been able to come out here and do much of anything. So it's just really, really still got the piles of weeds I never got removed. I never got the tomatoes strung up. Peppers are looking great, but they're full of weeds. Everything is just kind of a mess right now. I don't know how to get caught up. I uh, just do a little bit every day and do the darn best I can. It's all I can do. This one right here, the Buena Mulata. It's got some beautiful purple pepper setting. I really like this one. I think this one is almost like an ornamental plant, the way the purple flowers and the purple stemming. So I would like to grow more of this one next year for sure. It was the first pepper to set any fruit in the whole garden and we have a bunch of varieties out here. So it's an awesome sign. Unfortunately, all these weeds have got to go and not just by ripping off the tops because I'm too busy filming to <laughs> actually pull them by the roots. Like that. Yeah, that's better. It's always important that you grip a weed from the base to pull to make sure you get the roots out. Because when you don't get the roots out, it grows back very fast. Most weeds are annuals, so if you get the roots out, you're in luck. Oh, I got a dill flower. Hello, pretty dill. I might let that open and bloom a little bit more and uh, attract some pollinators to the garden with it. And all that that was supposed to be a garden this year is now full of weeds. Some of the most obnoxious weeds there are. We've got the thorny pigweed amaranths. We've got the wild tomatillas. Those aren't the kind that you want. They just reseed everywhere and they take over. They're not good and fun and yummy like normal, like cultivated tomatillas. One thing I can say for sure is no matter what happens out here, whether I get anything staked or weeded, I will have tomatoes. We have blooms on all the plants growing very strong. We've even got fruit setting on some even though we got a late start so it won't be long before we're enjoying this i've already picked a couple of cherries that were just delicious does anybody know what this is any guesses anyone this is my brad's atomic and i was really nervous because these have herbicide damage on the top but it looks like they're starting to outgrow it and they're setting fruit so we are definitely going to experience the wonder of these here very soon. The basil seeds I got from the Honeystead, my friend Kaylee, are doing really good. I am pinching off the blooms to keep the energy in the leaves. Um, I only do this on some of my herbs and I don't pinch the blooms off of any of my vegetables. So we want as many vegetables as possible and those come from flowers. So with the herbs, we pinch off the blooms on basil to keep the plant bushy and productive and keep the leaves from going bitter. Once a plant is putting out flower, it tends to go bitter. So we don't want that on our basil. 
some of the giant red celery made it. A lot of it was damaged in the spring when I forgot to water the tray. But we've got a few planted here in between the tomato plants where they'll get some shelter and shade. And they're just little now, but we might get something from them. For those of you that haven't heard, we are hosting an event here in August, August 24th and 25th. If you can make it, we're gonna have a helping hand summer soiree. We're gonna have a bonfire and a potluck cookout. That's going to be amazing. We're all gonna join together in food and fellowship and have a big bonfire and roast some marshmallows and maybe play some music. Um, I'm encouraging people to bring their guitars and drums or what have you. So this should be a lot of fun. During the day on Saturday, we're going to try to get this area under control. We're gonna get those beds made into beds and mulch put on them. So with a little bit of help from you guys, I think we can get that done. If you're not able to come and help, I totally understand. If you just wanna join the party, you're more than welcome to. I'll leave a link in the description for an Eventbrite ticket location where it has more details about the event and the tickets are free we're just doing the tickets for a head count so if you're able to join us please come along and we have a Facebook event set up for it if you need to be invited to that just let somebody know and we'll get you an invitation to it so that you can post questions or anything like that that you want to participate with and communicate we can do that there so another big huge thank you to Royal Amethyst Acres my friend Mandy who is getting the ball rolling to get this organized when I didn't have the strength and energy to do so and we were not getting the help that we needed elsewhere so I really appreciate it Mandy you're an angel you have really stepped up and made a big difference in our lives and I appreciate that thank you